At a theme park called Medieval World in Los Angeles, employee Jamal is sent to clean up the ditch after having talked back to his boss. He and his co-worker can't help interrupting their duties to play around with swords, wishing they could instead work for Castle World, the superior rival park that will open soon. Suddenly Jamal notices there's a gold medallion in the ditch and guesses it must be worth a lot. He reaches into the water to grab it, but the medallion starts glowing and pulls Jamal into the ditch. When he resurfaces, he finds himself in an unfamiliar lake and swims to the shore to meet a drunk man called Nolt. Noticing the man's clothes in the area he's standing in, Jamal assumes he's accidentally reached Castle World. At that moment Nolt falls unconscious and Jamal checks on him only to notice he isn't breathing. His cries for help aren't heard so he gets ready for CPR, however Nolt's breath smells so bad that Jamal opts for using breath spray instead. This causes Nolt to immediately wake up and claim Jamal saved his life. Then Nolt takes Jamal to his camp, but Jamal is disgusted by these living conditions and calls Nolt's food roadkill. When Nolt explains that people hate him for failing the queen, Jamal doesn't take him seriously and gives him $2 before leaving, but Nolt throws the bills in the fire. Afterward, Jamal crosses the woods to find the freeway, only to end up on an old farm and almost gets run over by Sir Percival and his men on horseback. He moves out of the way just in time and then tries to go after the knights to call them out, only to discover a huge fortress. Assuming this is Castle World, Jamal tries to enter, only to be stopped by the guards demanding to know who he is. Jamal explains he's from Florence and Normandy, referring to the famous intersection in LA, but the guards mistake him for a messenger from the area called Normandy and let him pass, saying the king has been waiting for him. Once inside, Jamal sees a huge smelly market and a puppet show about the legend of the Black Knight. Then he gets distracted when he sees Victoria, the princess chambermaid. Jamal tries hitting on her but she doesn't understand his modern slang, although when he asks for paper and her number she's impressed that he can read and write. At that moment, Pershall arrives and touches all the women inappropriately, including Victoria. Jamal recognizes him as the guy who almost ran him over and calls him out for harassing women, causing Percival to pull out his sword with a threat. Jamal still thinks this is part of the act and doesn't take him seriously, but before things can escalate, the Chamberlain Philip arrives to take Jamal to see the king. Jamal is then taken to the throne room, where he meets King Leo and Princess Regina. Leo wants to know when the Duke of Normandy will be coming to marry Regina, and thinking he's supposed to improv for the stage, Jamal answers Tuesday. Regina isn't happy because it's an arranged marriage, but Leo is pleased and promises a ride back to town after Jamal rests. Afterward, Philip gives Jamal a tour of the castle, and Jamal stops by the bathroom to relieve himself. However this is a medieval-style privy and he finds it disgusting, so he can't do it. Suddenly Jamal notices a lot of people rushing outside and Philip explains they're going to watch the execution of the rebellion leader. Thinking it'll be a show, Jamal joins the crowd and watches the execution, grabbing the head when it falls because he's impressed by the realistic prop. However he soon realizes it's a real head and he passes out. Moments later, Jamal wakes up in his room while Victoria takes care of him. Jamal starts panicking because he saw a real execution, and his mood gets worse when Victoria says it's the year 1328, meaning he must accept he's traveled back in time and it's all real. Suddenly Victoria begins undoing her dress and Jamal thinks they're about to get frisky, but she's only taking out her medallion to show him it matches his. The medallion is a symbol of the rebels, and Victoria wants Jamal to help her kill Leo because he murdered the previous king to steal the throne, but the kingdom should belong to the widowed queen. All the rebels that tried before were decapitated and their heads are now on spikes outside. A terrified Jamal wants to leave, but Philip suddenly arrives to tell him that his ride is ready. Obviously the ride turns out to be a horse and not a car, and since Jamal doesn't know how to ride horses, he tells everyone that he's a messenger but also a court jester as a cover. Then Jamal tries to ride the horse, but the animal doesn't make it easy for him. It makes him fall multiple times and drags him all over the area, which causes everyone to laugh because they think it's part of a jester act. Leo invites Jamal to ride with him but Jamal struggles with the horse don't end, causing Leo to think he's very dedicated to his craft, which he respects. Later at the castle, Victoria takes care of Jamal's injuries, but he freaks out when he realizes he's being treated with leeches. After taking them all off, Jamal tells Victoria that he has to return to the lake where he found Nolt, which shocks Victoria because Nolt is supposed to be dead. Their conversation is interrupted by Philip, who informs Jamal the king has invited him to tonight's banquet. Jamal doesn't want to go, but Victoria reminds him of the impaled heads and he quickly changes his mind. During the banquet, Jamal is disgusted by Leo's manners and the way he grabs food, but he's gotta pretend he loves everything to avoid dying. Then Leo asks him to dance because he heard that Normans are excellent dancers. Jamal tries some classical moves to follow the medieval music, but he looks ridiculous, so instead he teaches the court musicians a modern tune he can sing and dance to. It's awkward at first, but soon everyone catches on and Jamal teaches them the moves to the song dance to the music so they can have fun together. While everyone enjoys the music on the dance floor, Victoria gives two servants some bread. Soon the king is also on the dance floor and while he's distracted, Regina grabs Jamal and kisses him. Percival sees them and threatens to kill Jamal for touching the princess, so Jamal runs to the balcony while Percival chases him. 
Meanwhile the two servants approach the king revealing that the bread has knives in it. When they are about to stab Leo, Jamal uses some drapes to jump from the balcony and accidentally kicks the king out of the way, preventing the two assassins from stabbing him. The guards immediately arrest the servants, and then Leo scolds Percival for failing to protect him while considering Jamal a hero. In fact, Leo appoints Jamal as a lord in charge of his security, even rewarding him with 60 hectares of land and all the women he wants. The next day Jamal already appears at the court meeting with new ideas like frappuccinos and fast food places with nice outfits for the employees. Afterward he plays chess with Percival, who says sometimes the queen must be sacrificed for the good of the kingdom, which is very suspicious. Later Jamal is called for a matter of security, a man has been caught stealing a turnip from the castle garden for his starving family. Leo asks him to execute the man and Jamal laughs until he realizes he's serious. To keep up his cover, Jamal yells at the thief and takes him away to be killed, but when they're out of sight, he gives the guy a bunch of coins and lets him go. In the evening, the king sends a naked Victoria to Jamal's room as part of his reward for saving him. Jamal admits he asked for her, but only so they could talk in private. He starts making noises to pretend they're doing the dirty while telling Victoria that he plans to leave the castle before the real messenger shows up. Victoria wants him to aid the rebels now that he has more access to the king, but Jamal says that he's not the right man for that. A frustrated Victoria leaves the room, not wanting to speak to him ever again. Then the guards outside congratulate Jamal for being such an amazing lover. Later that night, a woman enters Jamal's room and gets in bed with him, so Jamal gladly gets frisky with her, thinking she's Victoria. The next morning, the real messenger from Normandy arrives and reveals the truth. Leo and Percival furiously storm into Jamal's room, only to discover he's in bed with Regina. The messenger also sees this and informs Leo that the Duke won't be interested in marrying Regina now that she's no longer chaste. Jamal is immediately put in a cage to wait for his execution in the dungeon, where he finds the two servant assassins from the banquet. They tell Jamal that they used to be angry with him for ruining their assassination attempt, but now they think Jamal is a genius for ruining Leo's deal with Normandy, which makes the king weaker. They also share the legend of the Black Knight, a great warrior who refused to sell his loyalty to kings because he was only devoted to justice. Once a dragon swallowed him, but he cut his way out of the beast's belly and gained the ability to breathe fire. Sometime later, Jamal is brought out to be executed, so he claims to be a great sorcerer in a desperate attempt to save his life. He tries to scare the crow with fire from a lighter, but nobody is impressed because they already know fire. As they put Jamal's head on the chopping block, the executioner suddenly starts choking on an apple, making the villagers think that Jamal cast a death spell on him. Playing along, Jamal performs the Heimlich maneuver on the executioner until he spits out the fruit, saying he saved him with magic. Everyone is terrified, so Jamal next claims that he can make the sun fall from the sky. At that moment, a flaming arrow hits the king's tent and everyone panics, but Percival calls him out on his lie and sends the guards after him. A mysterious person outside keeps shooting flaming arrows and causes utter chaos, which gives Victoria the opportunity to sneak around and take Jamal plus the two assassins away on a cart. Unfortunately Jamal falls off the cart when the horse starts running and Percival orders a guard to shut the gate, but Jamal knocks the guard down and escapes just in time. The castle guards shoot arrows at him, but suddenly the mysterious archer arrives, it's Nolt, who takes Jamal away on his horse. The duo makes it to the rebels camp and Nolt informs Jamal he helped him to pay him back for saving his life, so now he can leave without debt. Victoria sees him and asks him to stay because he used to be the best knight in England, but Nolt still feels guilty for failing the previous king and leaves. Then Jamal offers Victoria to come with him to modern times where women are treated better, but she refuses to leave her people. Jamal goes back to the lake alone and hesitates to jump. Meanwhile Nolt goes back to his own camp, only to be ambushed by Percival's men. They start harassing Nolt and throw his flask on a pile of dung, but when Nolt is about to pick it up, Jamal arrives to stop him. Then he starts fighting the men using modern boxing techniques and some silly moves, managing to knock down two of them. However the men quickly recover and overpower Jamal together to beat him up. Seeing a friend in need, Nolt finally comes through and immediately defeats the men, even pushing one of their faces into the dung. After Jamal teaches Nolt to high-five, they return to the rebel camp, only to discover that Percival's men have already destroyed it and taken Victoria with them. Jamal asks the rebels to help him rescue her, but only Nolt volunteers because everyone else has lost hope in the cause. Suddenly a woman speaks up, it's the queen, who is glad to see Nolt is alive and doesn't blame him for what happened. Jamal convinces the queen to give an inspiring speech to the rebels, however she only has depressed words to share, so Jamal takes over. He steals a bunch of lines from many famous modern speeches and convinces the rebels it's time to fight and get their kingdom back. Then a training montage ensues and Jamal teaches them how to fight using techniques from sports like American football and pro wrestling while Nolt teaches them how to use a sword. When the rebels are ready, they make a plan to storm the castle, and Jamal gifts Noddle his rubber shoes for easier movement. In return, Nolt gives Jamal a knight's armor, which Jamal spends the night customizing. The next day, the rebels attack the castle, but they're shocked to find the gates open and no guard in sight. It turns out this is a trap, 
and soon Percival has his soldiers surround the rebels to start a fight. Chaos takes over the fortress as both sides cross swords and shoot their bows, causing countless deaths for both teams. Suddenly Percival's knights run away in fear when they see the Black Knight arrive, shooting fire from his helmet to intimidate the enemy. However the knight soon falls from his horse and reveals to be Jamal wearing the custom armor. Percival immediately tries to kill him, but Nolt cuts in to save him, and a duel between the knights ensues. While Percival and Nolt continue their sword fight, Jamal helps the rebels fight the soldiers using the techniques they learned during training. Their teamwork is flawless and soon they're turning the battle in their favor. Percival notices his men are losing and retreats to the top of the castle walls, where he finds Leo begging for help. However Percival is tired of him and throws him to the ditch. Meanwhile Nolt and Jamal continue to knock down soldiers, and Nolt even uses the silly techniques he learned from Jamal. Suddenly Percival shoots an arrow that hits Nolt in the chest, making him fall. Feeling defeated, Nolt gives Jamal his sword. A furious Jamal rushes to the top of the castle walls, only to discover Percival is now holding Victoria hostage. Jamal slowly lowers his sword, but Victoria refuses to let him lose and frees herself from Percival's hold, getting a cut on her neck in the process. Then Percival fights Jamal and easily disarms him, but Jamal tackles him down, almost falling in the way. Luckily he manages to recover and retrieve his sword to start beating Percival up using techniques taken from baseball and golf. Percival falls unconscious and Jamal runs to untie Victoria, but then Percival reveals to be acting and tries to attack Jamal from behind. Suddenly an arrow hits Percival to kill him, and Jamal looks down to discover it was Nolt, who is alive and fine. The rebels win the battle and celebrate in the name of the Queen. Sometime later, Jamal convinces Victoria to come with him to LA and they share a kiss. The Queen asks Jamal to stay, but he turns down the offer, so instead the Queen rewards him by dubbing him as the Black Knight. In the middle of the ceremony, Jamal starts feeling dizzy, and he suddenly wakes up back in his time. He's surrounded by the paramedics who rescued him from the lake and his co-worker, who informs him he was underwater for 10 minutes. Now Jamal thinks it was all a dream. His co-worker also wants to use the accident to sue the company for some money, but Jamal sees no honor in it. Instead he offers his boss some ideas to beat the competition. Six weeks later, the medieval world park is thriving with customers thanks to Jamal's ideas, and his boss is very grateful. While Jamal is helping the kids in the batting cage, a boy's aunt thanks him for it, her name is Nicole, and she looks just like Victoria. Both Jamal and Nicole think the other looks very familiar and feel a connection, so they agree to have lunch together sometime. As Nicole and her nephew leave the park, Jamal realizes that he never got her number, so he runs after her only to end up falling in the ditch again. When he gets up, Jamal finds himself inside an ancient Roman Colosseum with thousands of cheering spectators, so he has to start running away from the vicious lions. 